We'll come back to our topic on sufficient statistics. This is the second part of sufficient statistics where we will discuss about a theorem where we call this one as fischer neiman factorization theorem. Suppose that we have x1, x2, sn, a random sample which form a distribution with probability density function denoted as fx theta, where theta belong to omega for any real number. The statistic t, which is a function of a random sample x1, x2 up to xn, is a sufficient statistic for theta if and only if the joint PDF of the xi may be written as follows. We have the joint PDF fx1 theta, fx2 theta, fsn theta. We split into two parts. The first part is a function of g, and then the other part is a function of h. As you can see here, h does not depend upon theta. So to use factorization theorem in finding a sufficient statistic, we will factor out the joint PDF of the sample into two parts. The first part, not depending upon theta. The part that does not depend upon theta constitute the hx function, while the other part that depends on theta is also usually depends on the sample x only through some function and this function is a sufficient statistic for theta. So that's mean, if we want to use factorization theorem, we will write out the joint, the joint PDF of the xi and rewrite it in product of two factors, which is a function g, contains the xi only through the function u x1 s2 sn, and also parameter theta, while another factor h, which involves the xi in whatever form, but not theta. And again, if theta h is sufficient for theta, then any one-to-one -one function of theta h. So in case here, you need to know what is the definition of one-to-one -one function. For example, let's say if we have another function, let's say k theta h, and also theta h plus k. So k theta, k theta h is also sufficient for theta. Let's say we have theta h is equals to x bar. X bar is already known as a sufficient statistic for theta. So again, x bar can be written as summation si over n. So in this case, summation si is also sufficient statistic. And then the other example, let's say we have summation xi plus 2. So again, your summation xi is also sufficient statistic for theta. Refer to the first example. Let's say we have x1, x2, sn, denote a random sample from the distribution that has PDF given as theta x to the power theta minus 1, where your x belong between 0 and 1 your theta is greater than zero. So you want to show that theta h, the product of xi, is a sufficient statistic for theta. So our first step is to construct the joint PDF of x1, s2, sn. So the joint PDF of x1, s2, sn is given as product of fxi theta, which is the product of theta xi to the power theta minus one. So if we expand the formula, we will get theta s1, theta minus 1, theta s2, theta minus 1, up to theta sn, theta minus 1. So to simplify this form, it will become theta to the power n, because we have n terms, the product xi, x1, s2, sn, to the power theta minus 1. So we split into two parts. The, the first part is depend upon theta, the other part does not depend upon theta. So in this case, by using factorization theorem, we let a function g, which contains theta. So function g in this case is theta to the power n, x1, x2, xn to the power theta. And function h can be written as 1 over x1, x2, xn. So since our h does not depend upon theta, so in this case, the product x1, x2, xn is a sufficient statistic for theta. So that's mean by using factorization theorem, we will divide the joint PDF into two parts. The first part contain xi and also theta. The other part contain 
x1, x2, sn without depending upon theta. So refer to second example. So this one, we want to determine a sufficient statistic for theta. So given the first one, fx theta, theta over x to the power theta plus one. So again, we construct the joint PDF. So the joint PDF is given as product of theta over xi theta plus one. So if we expand the formula, you have theta over x1 theta plus one, theta over x2 theta plus one, up to theta over xn theta plus one. So we simplify, we write theta to the power n, product xi to the power theta plus one. So it can be written as theta n over product xi to the power theta, times 1 over product of xi. So in this case, we will look at the function g, which depends upon theta, is given as theta to the power n, product xi to the power theta, and factor h is given as 1 over s1, x2, sn, in this case. Since our h, again, does not depend upon theta, so the product of 1 over x1, x2, sn, or we can simplify, 1 over product xi is denoted as sufficient statistic for theta. We look at another example. Let x1, x2, sn denote a random sample from a distribution normal with mean theta, variance is sigma square. So our case here is variance sigma square greater than zero is known. So we want to show that x bar summation xi over n is a sufficient statistic for theta. First, we write down the PDF of normal distribution. So it's given as 1 over sigma square root 2 pi exponential negative x minus theta square over 2 sigma square. And then we write the product of the PDF. So it will give as 1 over sigma square root 2 pi to the power n exponential negative summation xi minus theta square over 2 sigma square. So in this case, we expand summation xi minus theta square. So we have summation xi minus x bar plus x bar minus theta square. So we split. So we write down summation xi minus x bar square plus n x bar minus theta square plus 2 summation xi minus x bar, x bar minus theta. So in this case, we note that 2 summation xi minus x bar, x bar minus theta is equals to 0. Since we can change x bar here as summation xi over n, so it will become summation xi minus summation xi, so it will result in terms of zero. So what we left here is one over sigma square root two pi to the power n exponential negative summation xi minus x bar square over two sigma square exponential negative n x bar minus theta square over two sigma square. Okay. If we refer back to the slide, so we already have this one, so this one becomes zero, so we just add one over sigma square root of pi to power n, exponential, negative summation si minus x bar, x bar square over two sigma square, exponential, negative n, x bar minus theta square over two sigma square. So based on this, we find out that hx is given as one over sigma square root of pi to the power n, Exponential negative summation si minus x bar square over 2 sigma square. So this one, this part does not depend upon theta. While the other part, exponential negative n x bar minus theta square over 2 sigma square constitute the function g, where in this case, t is equals to x bar is sufficient statistic for theta, since our h does not depend upon theta. Okay. 